in an amen. God bless you. Well, um, how many of you have never heard Bishop Henry minister before? Okay, fasten your seat belts. It's going to be a ride. All right, turbulence is on the way. Amen. Especially for the kingdom of darkness. Open your heart. Let God's word minister to you. Let's give a big God bless you as Bishop Henry comes to us all the way from Wari, Nigeria. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and smile and shout the loudest hallelujah. Turn to somebody. If you can just smile, tell the person that something good is going to happen to you today. Amen. If you are blessed, I want you to wave your two hands and just say glory to God. Do it better than that. Say glory to God. I'm so delighted to be here today in this beautiful city of Jacksonville, Florida. And I want to bring you greetings from uh, the saints in Nigeria, West Africa. I'm so glad to be here today and uh, so wonderful to see some of you I've not seen for some years now. And I want to thank God for the Apostle Errol and the beautiful Queen Pastor Dr. Debbie. Amen, Mustafa. I'm so happy to be with you today. I believe that God is going to do something tremendous in your life. So I want you to open up your heart. Because as I started praying and asking God to give me a word for you, uh, the Lord spoke to me and gave me a special uh, message to deal with, or to deal, to handle and to treat today. And I'm going to be speaking on a message that is titled, Who Art Thou, O Great Mountain? Who Art Thou, O Great Mountain? I want you to turn with me quickly to the book of Zacharias, a very familiar scripture. scripture. Zacharias chapter 4. We're going to look at verse number 6. And verse 7, Zacharias chapter 4, verse 6, and verse 7. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 7. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, Crying, grace, grace unto it. Uh, Zerubbabel was one of the leaders uh, of the Jews after they uh, were taken back from exile. Zerubbabel was so involved and instrumental in the rebuilding of the temple when uh, they got back from their bondage predicament. But you see, my brothers and my sisters, uh, when you look at this prophetic word that was declared to these Precious prophet named Zacharias. As he speak these words and declare this prophetic word to this leader named Zerubbabel. Uh, you begin to see that it is significant today and it is 
very uh, symbolic to a different situation that we have found ourselves as human beings. Uh, you look at the great mountain. Uh, you see, mountains represent different things in the scriptures, but we're going to narrow it down to the area uh, that refers to us. In terms of what mountains is all about. A mountain is, uh, represents obstacles. If you look at these two scriptures that we just read a moment ago, you will notice three articles. One of them, the word of God. The other one is Zerubbabel. And the third one is the mountain. You see, when you look at the word of God, uh, it refers to whatever declarations declared from God himself. His word that is being released to his people. The word of God that comes from God himself. And here we see that the word of the Lord came to this leader named Zerubbabel. You see, uh, the non-Jews uh, in those days, they, uh, they, prevent, they prevented the people from building the temple. And uh, they, they, were, they, were, they were prevented from completing this temple until Haggai had to stir up. Haggai and Zacharias stopped. Uh, Zerubbabel and, and Joshua to go about the building and the completion of the temple. And there were so many obstacles along the line and along the way. But ladies and gentlemen, it got to the time that God had to speak. And he declared his eyes. The word of the Lord came. And spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, It's not by might, nor by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. That this word was declared that it's not by might. And here we begin to examine the premise of the next verse. Who art thou, O great mountains? Uh, who art thou, O great obstacles? Uh, who art thou, O great impediments? Uh, we could refer them to be detours. Uh, some of the things that try to uh, block me from getting uh, to, the, to the place where God wants me to be. Uh, some of the things that stand on my way when I try to proceed forward. And most of the time when I uh, take the step and the leap of faith to get to the place that God has ordained for me. I come face to face with some impediments. I come face to face with a mountain. Of difficulties. Ah, this mountain of obstacles. And uh, my brothers and my sisters, uh, when I try to uh, excel, there is some uh, tend to block me from going further, you may think. Uh, there are those that are, on the, that are declaring on the inside of them silently but firmly. They are saying, Brother Prisha, you don't understand. Uh, Prisha, you don't understand what uh, I'm passing through. Uh, Prisha, you don't understand what I'm going through. Uh, each time I attempt to uh, press my way through, uh, there is a, a mountain of obstacles that stand on my way. 
And most of the time, I uh, try to go into the Museum of Memories and come out with a catalog of some of the good things that God has used me to do. And on the inside of me, I try to uh, stir up the faith and make up my mind that I'm not going to throw in the towel. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, find myself coming face to face with uh, uh, the great mountain, the mountains of failure, the mountains of health challenges, uh, the mountains of deprivity and deprivation, uh, the mountain of mental torture. On the inside of me, I try to uh, get divorced from all the negativities of life. Uh, but each time I try, there is something that is stopping me from getting to the place that God uh, has ordained for me. Uh, I appreciate most of the time I begin to experience loneliness uh, uh, because there's something that gets into my mind uh, and uh, invade my space. Uh, and most of the time before I get conscious of what's going on, uh, I find myself uh, in a state of depression. Uh, it has become a mountain in my life. Uh, uh, but brother Zerubbabel was uh, introduced uh, uh, to the fact that God is able to turn things around. Uh, and I've come to declare to you today with all the strength of my being uh, and on the basis of what's contained in the word uh, that regardless of your relegations, uh, in spite of your insults and injuries, uh, irrespective of your downness, uh, uh, regardless of the mountain that seemed to be deterring you and stopping you, from getting to the place that God has ordained for you. The Lord is saying, who art thou, O great mountain? Uh, you may be great mountain. Mountain, you may be great, but you are not greater than the he who is greater than great. Uh, you're listening to me. Uh, a mountain, uh, you may appear to be so large. You see, a mountain is a mass of a land. Uh, it's a land mass that is higher than, uh, than a hill. Uh, and it uh, protrudes. It uh, uh, rises so high that sometimes uh, uh, you find it difficult uh, to try to pull it down. But Jesus declared, he said, if you are fed like the mustard seed, uh, uh, you can say to the mountain, uh, I'm talking about the mountain of uh, failure. I'm talking about the mountains uh, of loneliness, uh, the mountain uh, of uh, uh, depression and dejection, uh, the mountain uh, of obstacles that make you feel uh, that you are not good enough. Uh, that mountain, uh, and sometimes the devil uh, comes to in invade your space uh, and get into your mandula, uh, uh, your mandula oblongata, and the mountain gets into your mind uh, and make you feel like you're getting ready to go crazy. Uh, but I got good news for you uh, that no matter how great the mountain seems to be, it is coming down. I so said the mountain is coming down. If you believe, you can just wave your legs and shout hallelujah. Come on, just wave your legs and shout hallelujah. I didn't say wave your hands. I said wave your legs and shout hallelujah. Because how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of faith. Wave those legs and shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Hey! Somebody say Hey! I want you to shout it like a Holy Ghost feel believer. Say, hey. Sometimes you look at the mountain. The mountain is before you. 
The mountain is so gigantic. The mountain is so great. Uh, and because of the greatness of the physical mountain uh, that has appeared to be spiritual on the inside, uh, you become uh, so shrinked uh, uh, into your shell. Uh, you are going through so many mess. Uh, you are going through so many pain. Uh, you are going through so many trouble. Uh, you are going through so many troubles in your life. Uh, uh, you listen it. Uh, and uh, these troubles uh, become so great that you now withdraw into your shield because there's something that kept telling you that you ain't going to make it. There's something telling you in your mind that you are not good enough. There's something telling you in your mind that God doesn't love you. There's something telling you in your mind that you're not going to excel. There's something telling you that God is against you. There's something telling you that God doesn't love you. And because of that, you will draw into your shell and the devil is a liar. I said, the devil is a liar. If you believe that the devil is a liar, shout hallelujah. The something is telling you in your mind that you are finished. You say you are finished. And the Bible says casting down every imagination. In the Greek, imagination means logisma. Every logisma, every imagination, every mental torture, every mental thought, something that comes into your mind and tell you that you're going to die, something that comes into your mind that you've got to give up, something that comes into your mind and tell you you can't make it, something that comes into your mind and say you cannot fulfill your mandate, but I've got good news for you. That is a mountain. The mountain has been before you for many years now. The mountain has been blocking your way for a long time now. The mountain has been standing in front of you. But I've got good news for you. All you need to do is stand up taller and speak to your mountain. Command the mountain to come down. Command the mountain to get out of your way. Oh, ye great mountain, who art thou? Who art thou, mountain? Because I got the Savior on my side. I got Jesus on my side. And because God is on my side, who art thou, O oh mountain? It is time for you to wake up from your sleep. It is time from you for you to wake up from your dream. You have been dreaming. You've been visualizing negative things. But it is time to wake up uh, and stand up tall uh, and confront that mountain, uh, that mountain of depravity. It is time to confront the mountain head, head on, uh, face to face. Uh, don't run away from the mountain. Uh, don't duck away from the mountain. Uh, face the mountain face to face uh, and tell the mountain to come down. Uh, tell the mountain to get out of your way. Uh, it may be rough, but tell the mountain to get out of your way. It may be tight, but tell the mountain to get out of your way. The mountain of disease and sickness, the mountain of loneliness, tell it to get out of your way. The mountain of failure, the mountain of inferiority, you are feeling, oh, I've messed up, I've failed. Ah, uh, yes, it's true that you failed, but that's not the end of the life. That's not the end of the world. If you keep running and you fall, stand up, dust yourself out, get the dust out, and stand up tall and keep running. Uh, you listen it. Uh, if you cannot run, walk. If you cannot walk, crawl. But all you got to do is keep doing something. Don't just give up. God is not through with you yet. God 
God is, has not written you off. God has not given up on you. It is time for you to stand up because you don't need to give up on yourself. The day you give up on yourself, that's the beginning of your downfall. But as long as you make up your mind that you're not going to give up on God and you're not going to give up on yourself, you're going to get to your destination. I've come to tell you this morning. Hear me. See the Bible, church. Hear me, Jacksonville, Florida. Hear me now. God is not through with you yet. Don't let your mountain restrict you from going forward. Don't let the mountain deprive you from excelling. Don't let the mountain stop you from fulfilling your mandate. Some of you, the Lord is telling me to tell you that I want to use you, my son. I want to use you, my daughter. No matter what has happened to you in time past, it is time to wake up and tell the devil that you have not been defeated. God will not allow the devil defeat you. Tell the devil, you cannot defeat me. Tell the devil, say to the devil, I'm still here. You may have knocked me down, but you're not going to keep me down. Tell the enemy to get out of your way. And that's why the preacher prophet said, who are thou, O great mountain? Who are you? You may appear roaring like a lion, but you are not the real lion. Who are you, O great mountain? You are coming down. You become a plain. There is only one lion, and that's the lion of the tribe of Judah. When he roars, he has the teeth to back it up. The lion of the tribe of Judah. You say, who are you, mountain? You cannot ruin my life. You cannot keep me down. You cannot destroy my vision. You cannot destroy my mandate. You cannot stop me. Mountain, no matter how great you are, I'm going to pull you down. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to destroy you. Every walk of the devil operating in your life will be destroyed today. Everything that is making you feel so lonely, making you feel so depressed, there are mountains that will be pulled down today in the name of Jesus. Why? Because the Lord says you must become a plane. That's what God is saying. He says stand up tall. The scripture says lift up your heads. Lift up your heads, oh ye gates, and ye'll be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory will come in. Uh, you may keep me in the tomb, uh, but you cannot keep me right there. You may, you may strike me down, but you cannot keep me down. Lazarus was in the tomb, but he was bound. His hands were bound. His legs were bound. A friend of Jesus, right in the tomb. His hands were bound. His legs were bound. And his nose had cutting wounds in his nose. And he was laying in the tomb. But let me tell you something. You may put me in the tomb, but you can't keep me in the tomb. Are you listening to me? It was a mountain to Mary and Martha. It was a great mountain. But when Jesus came into the scene, there was a turnaround. When Jesus got into that scene, there was a change. Although Lazarus' feet were bound, and that posed restrictions, his hands were bound, and his ears, eyes, everything bound with a napkin. Uh, yes, yes. But you cannot keep me. It may be a mountain, but the mountain cannot stop me. Some of you are listening to me now. Don't destroy your vision. Don't drop your vision. Don't give up because of the mountains that you have been facing. Don't throw in the towel. God has some better things for you. God is not through with you yet. But when Jesus got to that Tumba. He said, he called with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. 
And the Bible says that he that was dead got up, but his hands and feet were still bound. Jesus said, come forth. Lazarus, you don't have to be there. All I need to you is just need you to do is just get up. Ah, come forth. Lazarus, get up. God is telling me to tell you today, whatever your name is, the Lord is saying, my daughter, get up from that state. Wake up from that mess. God is saying, my son, come forth. You may be in the, in the grave environment, and the grave environment is a foreign environment. That's not where God has ordained you to be. And the Lord is crying with a loud voice. He said, my son, come forth. Although you are bound, but get up. It doesn't matter. Although you are tied up, but take the first step and get up. Lazarus, come forth. And when Lazarus heard the call, he heard the call. He he heard the call from Jesus. Lazarus woke up. I said, Lazarus woke up. You didn't hear what I was saying. You didn't hear what I said. Lazarus got up. Are you listening to me? But before Jesus called him to get up, he was lying down, bound. And he heard the voice, Lazarus. He was still lying there. And God said, come forth. Boom. Lazarus got up. But his legs were still bound. His hands were still bound. His eyes closed, bound. His nose had all those things. And he managed, he did it like this. Because he was still bound. And God said, come. And he managed. He got up. When he got up, he stood up. He didn't know what was going on. And immediately, when he got up, he saw that his legs were still bound. His eyes were tied. That he could not perceive. And Jesus said, Come forth. Come just the way you are. Lazarus began to struggle. He struggled. His movement was so slow. But that's what is going on in the lives of those who are bound. Their legs are bound so that their speed is so their speed is, is restricted because their legs are bound. They can't take a step of faith because their legs are bound. And their hands are tied. So they find it difficult to stretch forth and claim their miracles because their hands are tied. And Jesus said, Come forth. Lazarus was moving slowly. As he got out of the grave environment. Oh, glory to God. Jesus told those that are not bound. He said, lose him. So we have two categories of people there. We have the categories of people that are bound. That need to be loosened. And we have the other group of people that are already loosened. That need to lose people that are bound. Somebody give the Lord a big hand. Those that God has called. Are you listening to me? Those that God has called to lose those that are bound. Must fulfill their, their mandate. And the devil will not want to let you do that which God has called you to do because the devil gets into your mind and tell you that God don't love you. The devil come to manipulate your mind and tell you that God is finished with you. The devil comes to tell you in your mind that you're not going to get healed, that you're going to die in the sickness. Hey! Everybody say, but the devil is a liar. 
look at somebody and do like this. Do your hand like this. Look at somebody. Tell the person, the devil is a liar. Tell the person, the devil is a liar. Hey! It was a mountain. But the mountain came down. The mountain came down. Whatever the mountain you are going through, maybe you feel that you're going to die now. Maybe you feel that you're not going to last long. Maybe you feel that you're not going to succeed. That is a mountain that must come down. I've come to report to you today that if you believe God, all things are possible to him that believe it. Whatever the mountain you are going through, come on, give the Lord the loudest hand, everybody. Whatever the mountain that you are passing through, I've come to tell you that that mountain is coming down. No matter the name of the mountain, no matter the size of the mountain, no matter the structure of the mountain, it is coming down. The Bible said, pulling down every stronghold, every stronghold of the devil that has been holding you down. I've come to tell you today that that stronghold will be destroyed. The Bible says it shall be destroyed because of the reason of the anointing. Break yourself loose from everything that has tied you down. And God is telling me to tell you that everything is going to be all right. He says, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence cometh my help. For my help cometh from the Lord. All you need to do is looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of, my, of our faith. You don't need to throw in the towel. You are, too, you are too strong to give up now. You are too special to throw in the towel. You are made to succeed. And you are made to overcome the mountains. Whatever it is going on in your life right now, I want you to believe God. That as God calls your name and says, my son, my daughter, I want you to come. All you need to do is just obey and take the step. And Lazarus' legs were loosened. His hands were loosened. And his eyes was open. And Lazarus looked around and said, what's going on? What's happening here? And Mary and Martha told Lazarus, You've been in this tomb for four days now. He said, wow, well, really? He said, that you've been in this place now, but the master came and set you free. For whom the Son of God set free is free indeed. God loves you so much. God loves you. God doesn't want you to remain in that predicament. Whatever you need today, let your faith rise up. Let your faith, your faith rise up like thunder and sound like a tornado to pull down every unbelief and every doubt that has been oppressing you. Break free from every doubt. Break loose from every obstacle and say, I am free and I am delivered. You're going to enjoy the peace of God. Only one life so soon it will pass. But it's only what is done for Christ that will last. The time we have on this earth must be utilized properly. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your years. Do something for the kingdom. Get yourself busy. Fulfill your mandate so that when you get to heaven, and you are given the crown of glory. There will be a lot of stars on those crowns. Some people who may get to heaven may have their crown, but there is no stars because the stars on your crown represent not just only the souls that you've won, but all the impacts that you created while you're on this earth. Don't let mountains of difficulties restrict you from doing the things that God has called you to do. Don't let obstacles and difficulties and hindrances 
make you to withdraw into your shell. Because when you withdraw into your shell, you make the devil to be happy. Because the, the devil will be rejoicing and excited. Say, yes, I've succeeded in putting this lady in a cage. And I've succeeded in putting this brother in a cage. Don't let the devil cage you and lock you up in the cage and you feel comfortable in your cage, feel so comfortable in your comfort zone, thinking that you are doing well, not knowing that you have been locked up in a cage because you allowed the devil to lock you up in a shell. Break free from that shell and begin to touch lives. Live a life of joy, a life of happiness, a life of fulfillment. Because you've made up your mind that you're not going to allow any mountain to put you down. I want you to lift up your two hands, everybody. Just lift up those hands. Oh, glory to God. God wants to move in your life today. You have made up your mind and you've made up the decision that today is the end of allowing the mountain to stand before you. As you lift up those hands, as you close your eyes and you begin to just pray silently, I'm getting ready to pray for you, getting ready to minister to you. Who are thou, O great mountain? You are not greater than the Savior. You are coming down. You are coming down. The month of June, this month, is the last month of the first half of this year. You're not going to cross into the first month of the second half of this year with your mountain. The mountain is becoming a plain. It's coming down. There's healing. There's deliverance. Oh, God loves you. You're going to drop that mountain right now at the feet of Jesus. You're not going to go home with the mountain today. I want everyone to rise up on your feet. God loves you. God is looking for people that will say, I'm free. God is looking for people that will say, Lord, thank you for bringing me to see the Bible church this morning because... I came here with my mountain, but I'm going home without one. So I'm dropping it at the feet of Jesus. Those who have the faith to believe God will receive from the Lord. Those who are saying, I'm going to exercise my radical faith. I'm going to exercise this radical faith. To speak to the mountain in my life to come down. As you rise up on your feet, I want everyone just take that step of faith to the altar to drop that mountain before the Lord at the feet of Jesus. Everybody in the building, make your way. Everybody in the building. Make your way to the altar. As you take that step, the first step, as you take that first step, and you are saying, Lord, I'm not going back home with the mountain anymore. As you take that first step, God is going to honor you now. Everybody in the building. Oh, God. God. Thank you for taking this mountain of difficulty and obstacle, no matter what the mountain is, to this place. Yes, God. God, I thank you, everybody in the building. God loves you so much. Oh, the anointing of God is here this morning. The Lord is saying, I'm going to do a new thing in your life and it shall spring forth. Thank you, Jesus. Sister, I want to pray for you. 
God is telling me to tell you today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to restore to you all those years that the canker worm has eaten. And your speed is going to be very, very, very fast. Your speed is going to increase because that which you have lost for the last few years. He says, I'm going to compensate you. And the Lord is saying, I will strengthen you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. And God is telling me to tell you, sister, that all hope is not lost and it's not over. The Lord is saying, it's not over with you, but God is saying, come back to your first love. Come back, say the Lord. Come back to your first zeal, say the Lord. Come back to fulfill your mandate. Yeah, I've called you and I'm here. I've placed you. Don't give up. God is saying, all hope is not lost. But he says, I'll do a new thing in your life. But he says that the latter years will be more beautiful, more fulfilling than your former. But God is saying, look up and trust in me. He says, I've seen all your tears. I've seen the pain that you went through. I've seen all the difficult times that you experienced. I'm going to give you a compensation for the troubles. He says, stay up your faith. Stay up your zeal. Wake up and show to the devil that you can't be defeated. Believe God. Believe God. The yoke is broken from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I rebuke every mountain. I command every mountain to become a plane in your life. Receive a touch from God. From the crown of your head down to the sole of your feet, through your back, your spine, your legs, your, your hands, your mind. Receive strength right now. Receive strength right now. God loves you so much. And the Lord is telling me to tell you, he said, today I've opened up a new chapter. A new chapter is open today. Begin to give him thanks. Begin to give him praise. Begin to give him praise. A new chapter is already open in your life. Bring the sister. Come, sister. Come. Sometimes it's as if you get nervous. But the Lord is telling me today that he's going to break that yoke of confusion. Sometimes you get confused. But the Lord is saying he's going to bless you with this, the anointing that brings clarity in mind. Clarity of mind. And the Lord is telling me to tell you that don't doubt him for a second. Don't doubt. He has prepared a whole lot of good things for you. And the Lord is saying, flow in my joy and in my peace because God loves you. He says, I know your name. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're feeling. I know how you feel. Whatever you are going through today, the Lord is saying it's over. It's all over. Because the blessings of the Lord make it rich. And he added no sorrow to it. No pain. No toil. No trouble. Because God loves you. The healing power of Jesus is here. Right now. God wants, oh, glory to God. I just heard this word right now. The Lord just told me, he said, I'm going to heal every disease that is 
in anyone right here on this altar. It says, every disease in anyone is a good news because God said he's going to heal them all today because they came with a mountain that they will not go with that mountain today. Those who are sick, just raise your right hand. Those that have any health challenge, just raise only your right hand. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to lay my hand on you. I'm coming. Is there any anointing oil, please? Any the anointing oil? I'm coming to you. The moment I touch you right now, Those raising up their hands. I'm going to anoint all of you then before I start praying. I want you to believe God today. You are going to be surprised. You are going to be surprised. No matter what it is. Hey! God, God is saying, all hope is not lost. Hey, God. Oh, God. God is awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. As I anoint you, I will anoint you and I will now pray a prayer of faith. After anointing you, ha, yeah, 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 yeah. you are going to have your own testimony. Hey, God. You will have your own testimony like others came and testified. You heard people testify. But it's as if it's a story. You are going to testify on your own. Others have testified. You are going to testify for yourself. Before tonight. Hey. Before tonight. Before this night. Before, before 6 p.m. You will come and testify before 6 p.m. Not tomorrow. I mean tonight. You will testify Hey, God, the anointing is moving. Mama, God is touching you in a special way. Mama, God is doing a new thing in your life. Who else? Mama, God is turning things around in your life. You are blessed. Mama, God is saying, all hope is not lost. Hey, the power of God break every yoke right now. From your mind, from your spine, from your back, from your legs, every spirit of palsy. Come out! Uh, 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 come out! Uh, uh. Come out! Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. In the name of Jesus, break every yoke in the name of Jesus. Come out, let strength come into you now. Take it away, take it away, take it away. Free, 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 free for whom the Son of God said free is free. Let strength come into your body. Let God renew your strength. Let God strengthen your body like a baby, like a newborn baby. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lose him and let him go. 
Tanabasha kaba hasiba. Tash. Kamasiye. There's going to be a difference. God is going to turn your sorrow to joy. God is going to turn things around. I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. God is saying, is there anything too hard for me? Hey! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God is saying to tell you, you will not die, but you will live. God has a purpose for your life, brother. You have to just come back to God and discover that which God has prepared in stock for you. God is saying, you're not going to die young, but he has prepared some better things for you. You need to start discovering the things that God has in stock for you. The mountain is getting out of your way now. Let the power of God touch your body from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be healed now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. The scripture is fulfilled in your life today. Because everything is all right. The Lord is saying, I'm releasing a double portion of healing upon your life. Go and enjoy strength and health. From your mind, in your body, physically, spiritually, emotionally, receive your healing. In Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus. The Lord is telling me to tell you, sister, fear not. So don't be afraid. So you should not fear anymore. Don't be afraid. Don't have any fear. You have, you, have, you, have, you have won the battle. You have won the battle. You don't know, but God is telling me to tell you that you have won that battle. He says you should start rejoicing and celebrating because you've won the battle. That battle that you've been fighting, struggling with in your life. He says you have won that battle. The healing power of God is here. As I anoint you right now, there shall be testimony. Receive from God. Be touched in Jesus' name. Oh, yes, it's flowing. Begin to rejoice because God has started working in your life. Hey, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want you to have faith. Faith in God. Faith in God. Is it your? Jesus, sister, praise God. I want to anoint you. There's a special blessing God has for you. Because I see wealth around you. I see you a pillar. I see you a strong pillar. You're a strong pillar. And I see some very wonderful things around you. And I see that God has structured you. He has ordained you to be a strong pillar here. God wants you to discover all that he has prepared for you because he has made you a backbone in this church. You have to discover it and you have to flow into it. And the Lord is telling you, he said, he's going to give you long life. And the Lord is saying that he's going to go, God, he said, all the investments that you've made, he's going to give you long life to stay long and enjoy all the fruit of your labor. God loves you so much. God has prepared good things for your life. Don't worry about anything. Don't have that fear of death. Don't be afraid. God is saying, I've given you peace. Unspeakable, full of glory. Everybody lift up your hands and begin to thank the Lord. Sister, God loves you. The Lord showed me right now. He showed me. He said, he has made you so special. You're so special in his hands. That you've been struggling with some things. He 
been struggling with some things. And the Lord is saying, lean on me. See here the Lord. I will carry you through all your struggles. He says, he will help you. I see the Lord. Oh, yes, I see that an angel held your hand and taking you through a path. Through all those impediments, through all those rough roads, the Lord is supporting you and helping you. That struggle, that struggle, health struggle. You're struggling in your body. You're struggling with some things, disappointments. God is saying, I sent forth my angels to hold you in your hand and take you through. Hallelujah. I lay my hand on you right now. Let the presence of God come upon you. Deliverance be released upon you now. In Jesus' name. Take it now. Begin to give the Lord praise. Praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Oh, it is not over until it's over. The Lord is saying, I am with you. I am with you. I will help you, I will touch you, I will heal you, I will strengthen you, and I will bless you. The mountain is moved from your life. In Jesus' name, everybody begin to give the Lord praise. Just wave those hands. Just wave those hands and begin to give the Lord praise. Yes. God is having his way in your life. God is saying, I'm having my way in your life. I hear the word of the Lord saying to you, it is well. It is well with your soul. It is well with your body. It is well with your spirit. It is well. Everything is all right. The mountain is moved away from you. And that is why the healing power of Jesus is touching you now from your mind through your body. In Jesus' name. You are free. You are free. Just wave those hands. You are free. Yes, you are free. There's a blessing on the way. Did you hear what I said? The Lord said there's a blessing on the way. There's a blessing on the way. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're going to celebrate more years. More years. I hear the Lord telling me to tell you that you're going to see your great, great grandchildren because he's going to bless you with longevity, longevity of life. God is saying, I'm going to keep you around because there is a work I have for you. It's going to bless you. You're going to live in health. You're going to live in divine health divine healing, touching your body into divine health, and not only that, divine peace. You're going to live a life of joy, a life of peace, a life of healing. Touch! Hey, God! A life of fulfillment in the name of Jesus. Everyone just give the Lord all the glory. I give you praise for you are my righteousness. Oh God, I worship you. Just worship him, everybody. I worship you. Oh my just God. Just let it flow, everybody. There is none like you. There is none like you. I wonder you change your voice. Just lift up your voice. Lift up I your hands and sing it. Worship you. Everybody. Almighty God. 
There is none like you. There is none like you. Just let it flow, everybody. Come on. I worship you. Oh, praise of thee. That is all. That is all. That is all. I love telling me to tell you. He said, I'm going to elevate you to a height that you never imagined. I'm going to elevate you to a height that you never imagined. So because you've held the hand of Moses, that a blessing will I bless you. Even to your fourth and fifth generation. So, because you have been supporting the work of God, like Aaron and all, you held the hand of your Moses. He says, I'm going to lift you up to a height that you never imagined. Continue to be faithful, say the Lord. There is no. Now, listen, while I was praying for this brother, now open your eyes, everybody. While I was praying for this brother, the Lord showed me a stream. He showed me a stream through this way, and the Lord told me, he said, he said, tell the people that a stream of healing is still flowing. That all those that will come tonight, those who will invite people that are sick, Get on the phone and just tell them to make their way here tonight. That the stream of healing is still flowing. It hasn't ended. Those who come tonight, that the healing is still taking place. The Lord is saying, I have healed some people today, certain specific disease. But I'm still going to heal them again because there are some other areas that they need healing. Some people may, may need healing spiritually. Some may need healing financially. Some may need healing to clear off all their debts. The Lord told me, see, many have been entangled with a lot of debts and it's weighing them down. The Lord said, I'm going to release healing from that stream of healing. And people will get totally free tonight. Hallelujah. You know, when we lay hands on people like this, when we lay hands and pray for people, sometimes it looks as if it's just a formality that a lot of good things has taken place tonight. There's a brother that was sharing with me on yesterday. I think you are the one. You're the one sharing testimony of healing. Yes, I want you to just tell them. Here, the last time Bishop was here, I was having some stomach problems. They tested me for this, no results. Tested me for this, tested me. The doctors couldn't find anything. We found out I was lactose intolerant. It, I've eaten cereal my whole life, you know, milk, cheese. I love cheese, cheese on anything. But here in the prayer line, he's praying for one of y'all. I was behind one of you waiting to catch you. He stopped. He said, somebody has stomach issues. Somebody's stomach. I looked at him eye to eye. I said, it's me. He reached out. This man right here reached out. He palmed my head like a basketball. 
But you know what? As soon as he did that, my faith was reaching out. In his walk with God, the Lord touched me. And y'all, maybe not any, maybe not everyone here has felt God touch your body. But if you have, you know. You know when God's touched you. I claim my healing right then. That afternoon, I went home. I ate some cheese. The next day, no stomach problems. The next day, I ate a bowl of cereal. I eat a bowl of cereal now just to kind of like, ha ha, I've been healed, Lord. I've been healed. God made this body. I'm not going to let milk push me around. So if you believe in healing or if you don't, you're, you're shortchanging yourself if you don't believe in it. Especially when he calls you up here like there's a specific need and you identify with it, you need to beat feet and get here. And if you know, we all know somebody that's sick. We all know somebody that's got something going on. Bring them tonight. You heard what he said. There's more healing that's going to take place tonight. I'm, I'm a believer. I'll be here. And the Lord showed me, like I said, while I was praying for that brother, he showed me a stream flowing in this church from this direction. And as I saw that stream, I didn't know what it was. And I hear the Lord told me, he said, tell my people that the healing stream is still flowing. Those who will come tonight, they will receive. He says, tell them to be on the phone and invite people tonight. What the doctor could not do, the Lord is saying, the healing stream is flowing. And all you need to do is just tap now, this is spiritual. It is symbolic. There's many that will come tonight. Some have been healed of certain specific disease or sickness to, today. But the Lord is saying, I will still touch them in some other areas. So you can think about other areas that you need God to touch you. And between now and 6 p.m., some of you will start having testimonies because... By the time you come tonight and you've noticed your testimony, practically signify, go to the pastor and tell them, tell the pastor that I have a testimony to share. And we're going to give you the opportunity. Between now and tonight, some of you will start seeing the manifestation of your healing. And if you know anybody that is bound, that is sick, that's troubled, that's discouraged, May not be physical sickness, maybe mental sickness, maybe emotional sickness, maybe financial sickness, whatever it is. Get on the phone and let's get this place jam packed tonight. Let's give the Lord a big hand.